Hi, everybody. It's Michelle Hill, your legacy builder at Winning Proof. And I am here today with another Winning Proof Unscripted. And my guest today is Eric Pinnell. And Eric, and I'm going to just read these bios so I don't mess them up. So <laughs> Eric is the owner of E by Me, a platform that is revolutionizing the marketplace for black owned businesses. His mission is to connect 2 million black owned businesses with customers that need their services and products. He's also a podcaster, published author, connector, and creator. So welcome, Eric. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Absolutely. And Eric and I originally met on an Every Dot Black Entrepreneurial Mastermind call. So that's how we originally got connected. And I was very intrigued by what he, the company that he is building and has built. So that's, we're going to just dive right in. And I want you to tell the people that are watching the viewers, the story behind eat by me and mm -hmm. what makes it different from other sites like Fiverr, guru.com. Yeah. So thank you again, Michelle, for having me. I really appreciate it. And um, hello everyone. Um, so, so even he started out of uh, really kind of uh, the transition with COVID and all of the kind of uh, diversity issues and divisive nature that we've had going on in the country right now. Um, as I saw things kind of changing and progressing like everyone else, small businesses closing, um, large companies asking for uh, PPE loans and things of that nature, um, we saw a shift where we're really going to have to step in and kind of put something in place that's going to help small businesses and freelancers, particularly black owned businesses. Before COVID, we were already underrepresented, um, didn't have large budget budgets and things of that nature. So having something in place like this and essentially what Ebony is to your point about the difference between Fiverr and other markets, what we've done is we've combined Fiverr. And for those of you that don't know what Fiverr is, I think we should clarify that is Fiverr is an online marketplace that has a collective of all different creative services like graphic design, logo design, web development, different tech services, all in one marketplace. Uh, so that you can go to that marketplace and look whatever it is that you need for your business. If you have like a, a blog or some type of service where you have, want to have an online presence, um, it allows you to search for that. So we're essentially that, but we're for black owned businesses or freelancers. Um, so we're, our goal is, as you mentioned, is to get out of directories, Facebook groups and chasing people down that way and kind of have a collective one place where you can go and find these black services, not only locally, but nationally. And then we market those services to 40 different countries. Okay. How did you get into 40 different countries? How, how did that evolve? Yeah. So the, the payment processor that we use, um, I mean, if we could go beyond 40 countries, we would, but it's just that the payment process that we use Stripe only allows us to market to 40 different countries. So that's why that number came up. It's more of a restriction for them and not us. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So you're also a published author. We're going to kind of take a detour here. Yeah. What is your book about? And I am not, I'm not the ghostwriter or the publisher or anything. <laughs> This is Eric's, you know, I just want to make sure so people, you know, know that he's not a client of mine, but yeah. you have a published book. Tell people what it's all about. Yeah. So the book is called uh, Project Management, The Black Experience. Um, the background behind that is I have extensive amount of years in project management, um, working in cor corporate America, Fortune 500 companies. And my experience, um, as I discovered along with many others, is as a black project manager, um, it, it could be kind of lonely in those corporate walls where you look left, right, down, up. Um, you could tend to be the only one in those rooms, um, which is really kind of a smaller portion of what we see in corporate America as you go through hiring ranks. Um, when you're working on the front line in those um, kind of contact center environments, you see more of African-Americans, more blacks in that setting. But as you go up into more of those um, high level corporate jobs like project management, corporate consultants and things of that nature, it could get kind of lonely where you don't see as many blacks. Um, so uh, out of frustration, out of wanting to reach and help 
more people that are faced with the same challenges I was faced with. Um, I wrote the book um, and the experience I got of it was really amazing because as I was writing the book, I reached out to many other project managers through LinkedIn, um, black project managers, just to kind of learn the experience. I just wanted to get a pulse check to see what I was feeling, if it was just me or if it was more than that. And what I found was pretty astounding. Um, a lot of ways sad in a lot of ways, but um, it helped me build up the content to write the book. Okay, okay. And I'm sure it has helped a whole lot of people because, you know, there there is a, I, I might have mentioned the name to you um, on LinkedIn. There mm -hmm. is a Belinda Kendall, or mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's her, her name, but she is always posting, you know, black firsts, like mm -hmm. first black woman to be CEO of this or first black man to be, the, you know, something right. that she posts several times a day. So, yeah. um, but, but that's more the exception than the rule, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it, it's the same in the corporate world. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, I get those phone calls. I get those uh, Instagram messages, LinkedIn messages all the time where someone out of the blue bought my book and they wanted to reach out and connect. Um, and, and I get that call. It's, it's a it's one of the best conversations I actually have because, number one, people are they're scared, um, they're frustrated, they're angry, and they're just looking for someone to talk to and just kind of share the story and just say, hey, we're in this together. And that's that was the reason why I wrote the book. It wasn't to become a millionaire or anything like that, but it was more or less for me to kind of cast a wide net and lend the help where I can. But most importantly, I can learn through the process from other people's experiences as well. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. It's something, do you hear a weird thing in my microphone? A little bit, yeah, I do. Yeah, I don't know what it is. There's a weird reverb sound, so. First time there, so I'm. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so you're entrepreneurial minded. Yes. Right. Correct. So, Absolutely. what obstacles have you overcome? What obstacles have you faced and overcome during your entrepreneurial journey? Um, for for me, uh, the biggest one is, uh, you know, most time you hear entrepreneur and building tech startups. Um, most people come with that development technology background. My background is far from that. So I'm a non-technical founder, um, which is another avenue I've been able to reach out and lend a hand. And it's because I figured out a way by using tools um, and resources to overcome that challenge by taking an idea, building it out using tools that allows you to bypass the whole curve of learning technology and put it out to the marketplace and solving problems. So that's another journey that I've kind of been able to explore where I've been the resource guy for non-tech founders. Um, so I get those calls and those emails all the time as well. Okay. And I know we were on last week, we were on a, an every dot black podcast training. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you do have a podcast already. Yes, I do. The success code. I do. What, yeah. What kind of podcast, what do you broadcast from there? Yeah, so what I broadcast is essentially that part of what I just mentioned is um, using those collective of tools and resources to help you design your life. Um, and a big part of that is many people have ideas, many people have different dreams and aspirations and things they wanna accomplish, but being able to take that step, um, it could be finding the right tool, the right resource, the right knowledge, um, and those are the things I talk about in there. We're sharing those tools, sharing those resources. And I really, what I am is just a crash dummy of uh, the many successful entrepreneurs that are out there because I read a lot, I study a lot what they do. But most importantly, I apply, uh, I really apply daily what it is that they practice. And that's what helps me. And I, I'm all about sharing those resources for others that follow and listen to me as well. Okay, yeah, that, that's great. What? person has been, I, I don't know, that sound is driving me crazy, <laughs> especially the first time. I'm sorry, I'm kind yep. of distracted. But what person has been the most influential in your life as an entrepreneur in yeah. your success journey? Who has really influenced you? 
Yeah, many, but the, the biggest name that sticks out to me, as I mentioned, the crash dummy course for for like how to design your life and things like that. Uh, Tim Ferriss. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the four hour work week. Um, so that's where it all started for me. <laughs> yes. I'm sure it's there anybody right behind you. Yeah. Um, the four hour work week is where it started for me, just kind of learning those principles, which was eye opening for me and many others. Um, and as of late, his other book, uh, Tools of the Titans, which he has a collection of other successful entrepreneurs, actors, athletes, and you can like learn their principles. I, I love learning those new things and then figure, figuring out how they fit into my day and my life and put them into practice. Yeah, absolutely. And I listen to a lot of Les Brown. He's been on LinkedIn yes. daily, you know, live yes. uh, at Sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 1230, sometimes it's one. All depends when he's on. Yeah, when he's yeah. on, he's on. But that, that's one for me, too, that is just really, you know, motivational. And yeah. just keeps me, keeps me pumped, keeps me going. So what are you busy with these days? Oh, busy today is definitely it's all about the Ebony marketplace. Uh, we just launched Ebony uh, three weeks ago. So uh, we are busy uh, with tech support, marketing, um, you know, our partnerships and collaborations. So it's day to day, every day, all day, Ebony until I go to sleep at night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, I don't you know, I forget to pronounce it Ebony. And then once I looked at it, and I, I shared this with you before, it's like I was looking at the name, looking at the name, and it's like e Ebony, e yeah. e e Ebony. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit of a light bulb moment. That That's exactly the reaction we wanted. So that, that means it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. What do you see it becoming? Yeah, so we we see it becoming the streamlined market, you know, the marketplace for Black business and freelancers. Um, we wanted to be the go-to place again. Our goal is to get people like we we're not knocking directories, we're not knocking existing things out there, but along with everything else that's innovating out there, we want the way people do Black businesses do business online. We want that to innovate as well, and we think we have the right place the right marketplace for that to happen. So that's exactly what we want. Um, we want to transition people there. We want to continue to learn. We want to continue to teach and do all those things to, to make that happen. Okay. And you have a little different buying system than say a Fiverr would have where you, you know, it's, it's a certain system you pay the, the buy, the seller and then they tack on whatever do, you do it a little bit different. Yeah. So we, we do it different in a sense that, um, you know, when the buyer comes in and makes that purchase, um, it's mainly just a soft hold on the on the front end um, until the seller delivers the product. And once the buyer agrees that, hey, this this works for us, they hit approve. And then that's when the money is exchanged from there. Um, we don't do any upfront charge for a person to register, whether it's a buyer or a seller. Um, and we don't pay any, you know, we don't charge anyone for extensive marketing fees or anything like that. We do, it's, uh, it's an 80, 20 split. So we keep 20% to the platform and then the sellers themselves that delivered the work keeps 80% of the profits. Okay. I really like that as opposed to how Fiverr does it, yeah. you know, because yeah. there's, I've had things done and if you don't like it, you paid already, basically, yeah. and I had, you know, sellers disappear and all that. So yeah. I, I like your system. The, the other big thing with us is, you know, we don't put any cap on the amount of services you want to put on there. So it's definitely an open market. Um, so the many services that you can offer that's valuable in the marketplace, you can put as many services on there. And you as the seller controls the market as well in terms of pricing. Um, so I know a lot of people were, were hesitant with Fiverr that we heard with kind of our discovery calls is, hey, I don't want to offer my services for five dollars. Well, you don't have to do that. You're not restricted to five dollars. <laughs> you definitely can charge what you're worth, just as you do in your current market and marketplace. You can do the same thing on our platform as well. Yeah. And I love that because 
a lot of times on Fiverr, it's just, yeah, you pay $5, but you get five words. Yeah, absolutely. For five, you know, so I really like the way you, you've set it up and, you know, the way it's progressing. So to, to be two weeks worth, and I've been on the site and, yeah. you know, it's very easy to use. It's yeah. very user friendly. Yeah, it's, it's, I appreciate you saying that. It's been great because we've uh, got the ear of some former uh, Facebook developers as well. So uh, they really like the mission. They're going to be helping build our phase two, a lot of new functionalities to come as well. So we really love where we're headed. Um, and this, as I told you last week, Michelle, this is the stage we're at is what I enjoy the most because I like getting in the weeds and, and learning from the users to let them hear my voice, learning about their pains and experiences that they're going through now. And we kind of lock arms and, and build this up together because we built this platform for them. It's not my platform it's for the people that we we that's that's a target user for the platform yes and what are the services that are used most you know i know you have graphic designers yes. uh, i went on there and looked for illustrator mm -hmm. like a children's book illustrator so what are the most popular services that are offered yeah the two biggest is, uh graphic design and video videographers uh podcasting services as well uh, so those are the top three uh, that that's really churning right now. Okay. Well, that, that is awesome. I, I love the idea. I love it. I will use it a lot to find, you know, entrepreneurs that I need for, for different, you know, tasks that I have, like um, in the podcast training on Saturday. Absolutely. Had, like go to the, they'll go to again, Fiverr for, you know, your intro and outro, but now we can go to your site that's and right. get an intro and outro for a professional podcast. So I urge people, please do that because it's a it's a great site to use, and you know you you get professionals that know what they're doing. That's right. So how can people reach you? How can they they subscribe to your podcast? Yep. Yeah. So uh, to reach me, both either Instagram or Twitter, it's Eric Panel, such as my name, E R I C P A N N E L L. Um, and then in, in both of those profiles, you'll definitely find direct links to my, uh, my podcast as well, which is called the success code. My blog is ericpennell.co, not d.com, but it's .co. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, I'm always open to connect and looking forward to talk and help people where I can and learn as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we all are in the learning process. Absolutely. I'm constantly absolutely. perpetual learning. Yep. So, yeah, thank you so much for being here today, for telling everybody about, say the name again. Ebony. <laughs> I want to call it Ebony now, so I don't right. want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, go on there. So thank you so much for being here today and being my guest and telling people how to get connected to this site. E thank you. And spell it for people so they know how to look for it. Yeah, it's a E B U I N E E. Okay, E B U Y N E E. You got it. That's dot it. com. Yep, dot com. Okay, okay. Well, wonderful. And you have been listening to another episode of Winning Proof Unscripted. You can reach Winning Proof at winningproof.com. That's W I N N I N G P R O O F winningproof.com or you can reach me by email winningproof at gmail.com and you see my at winningproof you can look me up on twitter um, instagram linkedin all those places <laughs> and uh, thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your monday